The opinions expressed in this show are the views of the host and not necessarily that of WTRW, 94.3 The Talker, or the Bold Gold Media Group. The following presentation is brought to you by the host of the program who is solely responsible for its content. Good afternoon. Welcome to Make a Change. I am your host, Terry Martin, along with my producer, Tom Jenkins. Good afternoon, Terry. Hi, Tom. Today, we have a show that is very interesting and unique, and our guests are Mark Chamberlain and Louis Castriata. Tom, I want to tell you how this came about. Uh, One day, I was scanning the online, and I was looking uh, through LinkedIn, and I met Mark Chamberlain. And I was looking for new business acquaintances, and I was looking for new business ideas, and I came across Mark's site that said, pig-headed determination. And I thought, wow, that really gets my attention because in my life, I found so many times that that's the way that I felt that I was, my feelings would be so strong that I, I had that, that pig-headed attitude. And if I didn't have it, I really wouldn't make it. So just for curiosity, you know, I clicked on to see what the name stood for. And when Mark responded, I, I was very amazed by his information. And I thought, you know, this is no accident that I found Mark because I figured, once again, God must really have sent me to his site. And Mark started to tell me uh, about his business and how it could help anyone. And after talking with him, we decided to have a business meeting. But, you know, how do you trust someone online from a website that you don't even know? Well. When we started talking, he told me of Jay Bez, which I, I will let Mark or Louie explain later. But when he said this, I knew that I could trust him. And he also sent me some really reputable information online, so I knew it was safe to go ahead and meet him. And uh, during the meeting, he told me of Louie from Leg Up Farms. And this Louie was his partner, he told me, in a new business venture. At this point, I said, you need to be on my radio show. We need your stories to help our listeners with this kind of inspiration and knowledge. Because this is what Make a Change is all about. Now, without further ado, I will introduce you to Mark Chamberlain. Good afternoon. You know, as I was listening to you talk, uh, what I was thinking about was uh, the fact that there are no coincidences. Some things are meant to be And when you're talking about the uh, prayer of Jabez, I was smiling. Uh, For some of your listeners who may not be familiar with it, uh, it's a uh, cute little prayer in the Bible. And, you know, where it talks about so-and-so begot so-and-so and and -and so-and-so begot so-and-so. And then there's an interruption. And it talks about this fellow by the name of Jabez. And Jabez means pain. And uh, he was named Payne because the mother's birth was incredibly difficult. You know, think about that just for a second, you know, being called jerk or turkey or loser. Uh, Well, this guy was called Payne. And what he did was uh, he just turned to God and said, bless me big time. Expand my borders. Essentially, let me serve you. And God heard the prayer and granted his request. So the link between us is, I believe, I understand that God wants us on a daily basis to ask for his blessing to expand our borders to serve him. And, uh, you know, when we connected and we mentioned the word Jabez, um, there was an electricity, there was an excitement in our conversation. And one of the things that my grandfather, Mark Krupp, taught me was, he said, you know, God is not subtle. He said, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. God wants you to listen, to understand. And when you understand the other person, you understand how you can serve the other person. You understand how you can help the other person. You get incredible passion. You get incredible power. And the cool thing about you, Terry, is when we connected, both of us have the skill, the ability to listen to the other person, to understand the other person, to empathize with the other person. And when I was listening to you talk about who you were, what you've done, what you've accomplished, I kept saying to myself, wow, this is an incredible person who had all kinds of challenges, all kinds of adversity, but through prayer, through perseverance, through pig-headed determination, you've accomplished incredible things. 
And then when you asked me some questions, I shared about some of the things that I've done through him and with him, and we connected. And my partner, um, you know, it's interesting. You mentioned uh, LinkedIn and the way to connect with people. Uh, some people might say we met on LinkedIn. I think it was preordained. It was, I think it was meant to be. Um, I found, and some people might say by chance, uh, Louie, and uh, I looked at his profile in the same way that you looked at me and I looked at you and we both said, wow, this is a neat person. When I looked at Louie and who he is, what he has accomplished, I said to myself, this is a person that I've got to connect with. And what I did was, same thing you did, I reached out to Louie and essentially I said, you're a neat person, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? And then what I did was, I kept my mouth shut, I listened to Louie, and Louie's story is incredible. What he's accomplished, how he did it, through God and with God is just unbelievable. So I connected with Louie, and the same thing, I listened to Louie, I understood Louie, then I told him a little bit about myself, and what Louie said is, same thing you did, hey Mark, how about we get together, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, and chat, and I took a look at his facility, and I'm gonna say this to the audience, if you're not familiar with Leg Up Farm, and you spell it just the way, Leg Up Farm, and you want to feel unbelievably good, unbelievably good, Google it, take a look at it, and it will fill you with joy. Now, I'm not going to tell Louis's story. I'm going to let him do that. But when you look at that facility and you understand what he accomplished and how he accomplished it, it's breathtaking. And what Louis and I are doing is we're forming a university to let people understand that they are capable of much more than they think they are. And the way that we're gonna do it is, Louis gonna tell his story, I'm gonna tell my story, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have guest speakers on to tell their respective stories. And the idea is when you listen to people, when you listen to Louis, when you listen to Mark Chamberlain, you're going to say, well, gee whiz, maybe I can do that. And what Louis and I want you to do is to understand that you are capable of more than you think that you are. And again, so when you listen to Louis, when you listen to Mark, when you listen to some of our other guest speakers, what Louis and I want is you to say, holy cow, maybe I can do that. And what Louis and I are teaching is we're going to give you the framework to do that. And all you need is a yellow tablet number two pencil and a phd and the phd stands for pig-headed determination you got those three things <laughs> you got it knocked well guys first before we get in i've got one question for mark first let me say thank you guys so much for coming in and doing the show today we definitely appreciate it and uh, you've definitely grasped my attention and i can't wait to listen um now we do want to listen to louis we do want to listen to mark but i want to know who is mark mark who are you what what are you uh, born and raised in northeastern Pennsylvania. I grew up on a farm, and my uh, I had two great sets of grandparents. Uh, they were both phenomenal. Uh, one was a gentleman farmer. He was a corporate guy, and he had a farm kind of on the side. The other one was a farmer slash politician. Uh, his name was Mark Krupp, and he was unbelievable. I had to hesitate. Um, he was cosmic. And what we're going to have on our website, he gave me a magnifying glass when I was just a little kid, just a little kid. And he said, hey, Mark, you know, when you're out in the sunshine, it's warm, it feels nice, and you feel comfortable. But if you take this little piece of glass and you focus the glass, if you focus the sunlight, you create fire. You create intense passion, intense energy. You can light people up. On the flip side, he said, if you think about the negative, if you focus on the negative, it can paralyze you. It can kill you. It can destroy you. So, again, when I was just a little kid, he said, Mark, you are what you think about. So you got to focus on the positive. And that is incredible. And, again, that's what Louie and I talk about. That's what Louie and I teach. And another thing my grandfather taught me, and this is really cool. I'm going to say this slow. He taught me how to benchmark the Amish. The Amish is a community of farmers that come together to help one another. They come together to help one another to build. They do it for free out of a sense of community. Now, what Louie and I do is we take that concept and we teach you how to get people to work for you for free because they want to. 
we benchmark the Amish. And the key thing that Louie and I talk about always is the other person. You got to have the other person win first. The other person wins, then you win. So, you know, by listening to my grandfather, watching my grandfather, benchmarking my grandfather, I learned how to do that. And one of the things that Louie and I will show you um, in our workshops, in our seminars, is uh, on the farm there was a uh, a plot maybe three to five acres it was a swamp it was nothing and a lot of people would look at it and say it's a swamp it's not productive you can't do anything with it what my grandfather did and that's part of what louis and i teach is seeing things as you'd like them to be seeing things that aren't there he took a swamp and he got other people to clear the swamp for him for free, and he turned it into a three-acre pond, which was absolutely gorgeous. And again, what he did was he benchmarked the Amish. He got people to work for him for free because they liked him, and that, again, is what Louie and I teach. But tell us about you. Tell us more <laughs> well, he about... he just said it's not about him. It's about <laughs> oh, the others. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, but I, like, no. he's a living example of this. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that Louie and I teach is, and I am proof of it, I am proof of it. You don't have to be smart to be successful. What you need is the yellow tablet, number two, penalty, PhD. Uh, I wanted to be a minister. I wanted to serve God and uh, with an incredible passion. Um, and as I said, I was not real smart. I was studying to become a minister in the 1960s. Um, I felt called. I dropped out of college, went to the Marine Corps, and I said, uh, I'd like to serve God as a chaplain's aide. And uh, I enlisted, I went to Vietnam, I got shot up, I spent a couple months in hospitals, I came out, went back to college, and I got into financial services. Uh, I worked with uh, Mutual of New York uh, for a guy by the name of John McCall. He was absolutely phenomenal because what he preached was win-win. Always, always, always focus on the other person. Make the other person a winner. That was John McCall. And I went from money. I got into uh, financial services. I ended up and I retired as a vice president with uh, Merrill Lynch. And um, I've taken a couple years off. Uh, I've, I wish the public could see my smile. One of the things that I did was um, I took some trips had some fun, played some golf, walked on fire with Tony Robbins. And that was and, uh, That was just unbelievable if you haven't done it do it it's it takes you to a whole other level and then uh what i did was um my passion is this university that i want to found and as i said before um i've been working on that and god leads us god is not subtle um god brought me to louis we had coffee together we talk together and when you talk with louie when you work with louie it's like sticking your finger in an electrical outlet (laughs) it's it's like whoa 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 it just gets you excited so um you know i could talk more about me but essentially um my grandfather gave me a gift and the gift is focus on other people put other people first Benchmark the Amish. Get people to work for you for free because they want to, because they care about it. You share the passion and you let people know how they can attain their goals by working with you. Hold that thought. We need to take a quick break. If anybody needed to get a hold of you, though, Mark, and had questions for you, how would they do that? We're working on our website. A uh, uh, phone number they can reach me at is 570-2626-261. So it's 570-2626-261. Very easy to remember. And we are going to take a quick break. You're listening to Make a Change with your host, Terry Martin. I am Tom Jenkins. And we have two wonderful guests in the studio today. We're going to talk more with them coming up after this with Mark Chamberlain and Louis Castriata. And uh, don't go away. And thanks for listening. Madari Clinicals, a unique skincare company, has a complete skincare line for men and women. From anti aging to glycolic and even a clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals is for you. Their number one product? Forgiveness. It's the secret to younger looking and younger acting skin. You can experience the transformation with fewer wrinkles, firmer skin, and a more youthful, radiant complexion. Treat aging, sun damage, rosacea, and more with forgiveness. Plus, buy one bottle of forgiveness, get one lip-enhancing complex for free. 
forgiveness. Apply it morning and night and keep forgiving and forgetting all through the day. Make a change with Madari Clinicals. Balance, restore, look, and feel new. Madari Clinicals, a complete skincare company for men and women. Call 866-646-3374 or check out madariclinicals.com. M-E-D-E-R-I clinicals.com. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker, with your host, Terry Martin. I am Tom Jenkins, and we're in the second part of the show here with the two wonderful guests. We've got Mark Chamberlain and Louis Castriata, and uh, and Mark has told us about himself, about how he, he kind of met Louis and uh, more or less his, his vision, I guess you can say, and, and what's guiding him and uh, and sticking his finger in an electric socket. <laughs> and, and I mean, he's he's charged up. And how much coffee did you have uh, today? Because, <laughs> I mean, you are just chock full of energy and uh, and it's. It, it's wonderful and it's refreshing to see, you know, the, the, the energy level. And, and with that energy level, um, tell us a little bit more about, you know, how you and Louie got together. And then we'll let Louie jump in because he's sitting here patiently just waiting, you know, to talk. And we'll let you guys handle it. You know, we're going to come back to the energy thing a little bit later on. But again, that is part of what Louie and I teach uh, how to. And I'm going to say this again slowly, how to attain and maintain any kind of emotional state that you want, I just snap my fingers like that. It's part of what I've learned. It's part of what I teach. So if you're having a terrible day, a down day, and you wanted to turn it around, what Louie and I can teach is how to turn it around and turn it up like that. Now, I'm going to turn it over to my partner. And again, as I said before, I met him uh, on LinkedIn. We connected. And without any further ado, I'm going to let Louie talk about who he is, what he is, where he wants to go. He's an incredible friend, great partner. And I got to stop talking. <laughs> I have stopped Finally. talking. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> go, Louie, go, go. I got to tell you, Mark, uh, for somebody to call me patient, I'm not patient. Right now, if, if you could imagine, they have me literally taped down and tape was over my mouth while Mark was talking. And let me tell you another thing. When Mark stuck his finger in the electrical outlet at Leg Up Farm, he lost all of his hair. <laughs> well, There's a little left. Maybe three quarters of his hair, but it is coming out on his face a little bit in, in the form of a, a mustache. So, um, But who is... Louie. You can call me Leg Up Louie. Uh, I like to be called Leg Up Louie. Uh, my staff at Leg Up Farm call me Tornado often. Mm. Um, I don't sit still. I'm always envisioning what's next. Um, Mark and I connected on so many different levels. And I think what we share most of all is very similar values and mission in life and also God. So for us, when we connected, what Mark talks about all the time is you can do anything uh, that you want to do in life with a yellow tablet, a number two pencil, and pig-headed determination. And when I heard Mark say that, that is describing my story to a T. Um, so if you go back uh, early in my life, I was uh, a kid that my parents would laugh and I never shut up. I talked constantly. Um, I was very inquisitive, wanted to know how everything worked. I was the kid in the back seat saying, how does the window work? What's that over there? How does this work? How's the car? How are the wheels moving? You know, all, the, all kinds of things like that. Um, I, I went to college for 40 minutes. <laughs> um, so that's my big claim to fame. So now, for the first time, I have a degree. It's a PhD from Mark for pig-headed determination. But I'm very proud of that because my father always wanted me to go to college, and now I, I have my degree. I have one, so too. I have a, and, and Terry has one yes. now, so I've uh, accomplished that in my life. But what I'm all about and what we're all about is this idea to light people up. We want to light you up. When you look at me, I'm just a normal guy. I went to college for 40 minutes. And last year at Leg Up Farm, we did 21,000 therapy appointments for children with special needs in the most unique, engaging, child-friendly environments you've ever seen. So 
when you go back to see how that was created and my story, um, I, I met my wife. So Mark wanted to serve God as a preacher. Well, I wanted to serve food originally. So my mom got me a job at a pony club camp because my sisters rode horses and I was the chef for a week. Well, my wife was the camp counselor. Well, obviously at the time she wasn't my wife, but uh, my wife was the camp counselor and we met there. And then later that summer, I broke up with her. And uh, I tell you now, being married, she never lets me live that moment down. (laughs) Um, So she always reminds me of that um, when she wants something, that at that one point in the summer that I had unfortunately dumped her. But I realized how good she was and what an amazing woman she was. So we ended up uh, getting married. We've been married almost 19 years. So our uh, anniversary is this month. But we had a little girl named Brooke and um, the interesting thing of my story, and, and I believe there are no coincidences either, um, I said to my wife, I said, let's start a therapeutic uh, riding program with horses at our house on Saturdays. Um, six months later, my little girl, Brooke, who was a year old at the time, was diagnosed uh, with a mitochondrial disease, and she has a secondary diagnosis in the autism spectrum. So after we grieved that time and and we were frustrated at the services that were available in the community, I remembered that vision of what I had told her and I formed Leg Up Farm that year with the vision and um, uh, I, I, I dream big. You know, my, I, I want to, I uh, say, have the courage to dream. Uh, that's what I'm all about. We all fail. Who cares if you fail? Mm -hmm. That's another important thing that Mark and I talk about all the time. Who cares if you fail? It doesn't matter. Um, If you wouldn't have taken that step, we wouldn't have all the things that we have today if somebody didn't take a chance. So for the first three years Leg Up Farm was in existence, I literally went around asking everybody, teachers, doctors, um, therapists, Parents, if you could create the ultimate therapy center for children with special needs, what would it look like? How would it function? What would happen? And then I set out to build that facility. Then for the next 10 years, everywhere I went, everybody said, that sounds amazing. Where's the pen? I need to take notes here. (laughs) But you'll never open. How are you going to open? How are you going to overcome... How are you going to raise $10 million? How are you going to sustain the operations? How are you going to find the staff? You can't find therapists. Everybody I talked to, they were negative about everything. They said, wow, sounds great, but you'll never open. And I remember this one state senator, we had gotten a land donation. And again, there are no coincidences. I feel um, I wrote a book called Leg Up the Courage to Dream, and I talk about angels in my life that God put in my path to help me on this journey. And boy, it wasn't an easy journey, but we received a land donation from this amazing woman. Um, And uh, at the ceremony where she donated the land, a state senator said to my father, Louis speaks as if there are children walking through the door. And he, ha- he really doesn't have anything. And that has always stuck with me. And I think for, for everyone, if they do have the courage to dream, you have to visualize that end reality. Where do you want to go? What's the destination? See yourself walking through the door. See a child smiling. If you don't believe it, nobody else is going to join you in that journey. When are you going to join a person that's... that? talks quietly about their the place they want to go that they don't think they're really going to ever going to that they're ever going to get there are you going to join them on that journey probably not you need to speak as if you're going to get there that you're going to arrive at that destination and make a difference in the world uh, this this book that you're talking about, where can we get that? Where can anyone buy that? So the, so the book is actually uh, on Amazon.com. 
Um, it's in the Kindle version, so if there are any uh, people out there that want to download it on an iPad or iPhone or any device uh, electronically, and it's also in a hardcover version as well. And what's the title again? It's called Leg Up, The Courage to Dream. And uh, the book is really um, an inspirational story and giving you the roadmap to follow your path, to to have that courage to dream and the steps that I took to get there. And I literally did it by writing something on a yellow tablet with a pencil and had the pig-headed determination that I did fail along the way. I failed a lot along the way. But you just have to be open to changing things and continuing to put one foot forward over and over and over again. You have to do the right things every day, and you'll get there. Now, you had all these naysayers telling you, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. What did you do to overcome all of that? Uh, I kept a positive attitude. You know, I, I broke it down into little pieces. You have to have that long-term vision of where you want to go. So that vision on day one for me was a $10 million building that created this environment for these children. But you have to go all the way back to the beginning of that vision and say, what is the very next step? So you have to take one little bite at a time to eat the elephant. You see the elephant, but you have to take one little bite at a time to eat the elephant. Too many people see the elephant and they get overwhelmed in all of the things that have to happen. So you always have to focus on the very next step, that little next step. So for me, it was the idea, okay, I need to get land and find something tangible that people can grab onto. Then I need to get that next little grant to open an office and create the plan and keep moving that, that funding path forward and then I need to get a loan and so it was just every one of those pieces. Now the interesting thing is some of those pieces took two years to accomplish but again it was the little next step so when you break it down into those components I have to find land. Well I visited a hundred properties. I, I sent out 500 letters asking people if they'd give me their property <laughs> and as Mark would say it's that's amazing. crazy right? <laughs> Go walk up to somebody's house and say, will you give me your million dollar farm? Well, I asked enough times and I I met this amazing woman. I was at a committee meeting looking at a different property and she quietly came to me and she said, I have a farm. Why don't you come and look at it? You probably won't like it, but why don't you come look at it? Well, if you were to visit Leg Up Farm today, and walk in our building, all of the windows in the rear of the property overlook this amazing waterfall for this pond that we've created into this beautiful valley where the sun sets. And she just gave you this farm? She gave it to us. I so can't wait our to families, come. you know, so our families have this amazing area of, yeah, they're coming there for therapy, but siblings that come along and uh, parents that come along can enjoy the gardens and have respite out there and play in the playgrounds and do all kinds of cool stuff we got to take another quick break when we come back i want to hear more about lake up farms okay sounds Sounds good good. okay (laughs) you are listening to make a change on 94.3 fm the talker with uh, your host terry martin i am tom jenkins with our guests also today mark chamberlain and louis castriata with leg up farms and uh, i can't wait to hear more about this if you have any questions for terry you want to get in contact with her or you can check out her website nadairyclinicals.com or call 866-646-3374 this is make a change on 94.3 fm the talker and we'll be right back Madari Clinicals, a unique skincare company, has a complete skincare line for men and women. From anti aging to glycolic and even a clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals is for you. Their number one product? Forgiveness. It's the secret to younger looking and younger acting skin. You can experience the transformation with fewer wrinkles, firmer skin, and a more youthful, radiant complexion. Treat aging, sun damage, rosacea, and more with forgiveness. 
Plus, buy one bottle of forgiveness. Get one lip enhancing complex for free. Forgiveness. Apply it morning and night and keep forgiving and forgetting all through the day. Make a change with Medary Clinicals. Balance. Restore. Look and feel new. Medary Clinicals, a complete skincare company for men and women. Call 866 646 3374 or check out medaryclinicals.com. M E D E R I clinicals.com. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker, with your host, Terry Martin. I am Tom Jenkins. In the studio today from Leg Up Farms, Mark Chamberlain, Louis Castriata. And we just heard a fascinating story. Uh, actually, I would consider it more of a miracle on how this happened uh, for you to, to be able to get Leg Up Farms. I want to hear more about it. All right. Well, the great thing about uh, Leg Up Farm, we opened in 2010. It was a 13-year journey of overcoming challenges to make it happen but the first child walked through the door in april of 2010 Uh, we just celebrated our fourth anniversary and the statistics just blow me away i mean we have served more than 1200 children since we've opened i mentioned last year we did 21,000 therapy appointments at leg up farm we also built a school Uh, So now we have uh, 30 children with special needs in a school at Leg Up Farm. We do summer camps. We um, the other thing that's just incredible about Leg Up Farm. I built the vision in a way that we impact the entire family. So siblings are drug from doctor to doctor and they just don't understand why mom and dad have to spend so much time with their brother or sister and why they're in waiting rooms we built leg up farm in a way that yes families come there because they need speech therapy or physical therapy or one of those um interventions for their child but everybody benefits from the experience Uh, we built the most engaging child-friendly environments you can imagine so it's a 64,000 square foot building We have 18 acres of therapy gardens that are used in therapy with the kids. So now they're doing physical therapy in a 450,000 gallon koi pond, interacting with the fish, touching the fish, hand feeding the fish. Um, But parents and siblings now can also enjoy their experience. They're not stuck in waiting rooms anymore. Mom and dad can sit on a bench in front of the waterfall and have a break for an hour and just enjoy the peacefulness of the property or they can um, I say we give time back to families now we're not taking time away anymore now mom and dad can go play on this 20,000 square foot playground with their other children and give them time they're not losing time we have huge areas where they can spread out and do homework all of our therapy spaces we literally built a 5,000 square foot town inside our facility as if you're walking on to any main street in any little town in the United States so now therapy is wrapped around engaging environments before leg up farm parents would say my child doesn't want to go to therapy well no kidding (laughs) you're twisting their body in a way that is painful to try to achieve a goal. Uh, They're uh, struggling to speak. You're making them try to do something that is really hard for them. Now kids say to their parents, when can we go to Leg Up Farm again? So it's the way I describe it as an adult, if you love something, it's not work to you. If you like to work on cars, jog, cook, any of those things, golf, When you do it, it's joyful to you and you work on it and practice it because you love it. We've turned therapy now into something that the kids enjoy. They don't even realize they're in therapy. They're on horses working on balance and coordination and core strength. And we have kids say their first words ever (laughs) on the back of a horse at 10 years of age now if you could imagine as a parent what that feels like to hear your child say their first words when you didn't know if they were ever going to speak i mean how powerful is that 
So we're engaging kids in their own therapy and by them being engaged, the outcomes happen faster. They love being at Leg Up Farm. So we're really being looked at right now as, as one of the most innovative pediatric therapy centers in the nation. And my vision is, I presented my vision to my staff and board, and we also have had 50,000 volunteer hours in the last four years because we get everybody engaged and excited about what's happening. I presented my vision and no longer um, do they question the vision. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So when I presented my vision this year on January 1st to my staff, it was one day we will impact a million plus people with the things that are happening here at Leg Up Farm today. Where is Leg Up Farm? We are located in York County, Pennsylvania. And we have people flying in from all over the country right now looking at how do we replicate the facility in their community. I'm working on a relationship with a major university to try to create a teaching and research insti institution on their campus where college students can be exposed to this model. And then when they graduate, they'll take something with them that they've learned at Leg Up Farm and impact even more people. It's multiplying the effects of what we're doing. If our listeners want to check out uh, more information on that, where is there? you have a website? Yes, or? yes yeah. absolutely. Our website is legupfarm.org. Just like it's, it sounds, L-E-G-U-P. Leg yep. Legupfarm. Legupfarm.org. And then uh, some of the cool things that uh, Mark and I are working on, if you want to be inspired in the community to change jobs, win an Olympic medal, um, start a business, create a nonprofit organization. We can help you with the tools. You know, Tom to and I are there. here just mesmerized. <laughs> I mean, we're just sitting here staring. I can't even think of any questions to ask because it's amazing. Well, if you're interested in any of that stuff, we have created another website um, called Leg Up U. So, Leg Up, the letter U, dot com, and we can teach you how to do what we've done in our lives. And that's where Mark comes in, and that's where you guys have gotten together. You know, one of the things, and I wish the public could see what I'm doing, every time that Louie and I get together, it's like uh, we light each other up, and what I literally have in front of me uh, are two pages of notes that I've taken while I'm listening to Louie, and Louie and I have been together for months, but each time we're together, I hear something new, I learn something new, and one of the things that uh, we teach... Uh, Terry, I think you said when Louie was talking about uh, the fact that uh, using the prayer of Jabez, he got a lady. Louie asks, and that's one of the things that we teach people to do. Ask, ask, ask. And if you're not comfortable asking, we teach you how to do that in such a way that you're comfortable. Because what you're doing is when you're asking, your focus is helping the other person. You want the other person to win. If the other person wins, then you win. And like the lady that gave Louie the farm, what Louie was doing was he was providing a channel that she could use to fulfill her need mm -hmm. to help, to give, to lift up. So her, I'm getting, I am honest to God, getting goosebumps. Mm -hmm. And this happens with Louie and I. We get goosebumps. Well, I call them God bumps because Louie was a channel for this woman to give her farm to help people. And again, whether you're selling socks, shoes, cars, houses, whatever it is you're selling, we teach you how to get people to work for you for free because they want to. And one of the cool things that Louie and I do, Louie is unbelievably busy. He runs a huge complex. But one of the cool things that we do when we sit down on a daily basis, and again, this is part of what we teach, you take your day timer, your date book, and you commit every day. I do 20 minutes a day, every day, around 4.30 a.m., daydreaming, brainstorming, what if thinking. When Louie and I sit down, I drive down to his place, we go into a conference room, he closes the door, he turns his phone off, he turns everything off, and what we do for three hours is we brainstorm. We get yellow tablets out and we brainstorm. It is electric. 
And what Louie and I are going to do in the workshops is we're going to throw up an idea. We call it brainstorming bingo. This is and the university that we're founding is going to be on the internet. So we're going to we're going to do it in two ways. We're going to be in person if somebody wants us to come to Alabama or Texas or Paris, France. We have a connection in France that we're working with. Uh, we have well, we have connections around the my world. Lo- my wife likes the France idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, But here's the cool thing. Now think <laughs> about this as a person. We're going to throw out an idea, a concept, and in real time, we're going to be communicating with people around the world in this brainstorming bingo session. And what Louie and I are going to demonstrate is you, you, you are more than you think you are. We're going to show you. We're going to teach you. And the cool thing is we're going to watch you. In the first session, I'm going to talk about the concepts, the how, and I'm going to give some examples. Louis is then going to get in and talk about what he did. And the idea when Louis is talking, what Louis and I want you to do is listen to Louis, benchmark Louis, and say, gee whiz, I could do that, or maybe I could do that. And then in the third session, what Louis and I are going to do is, in the brainstorming bingo session is, we're going to throw up a concept, and we're going to watch the audience provide the solutions watch the audience provide the answers it is it's electric it's incredible so in real time you're going to be communicating not only with a person sitting next to you but possibly with a person in france or finland or russia but you're not just talking about regular people that are in business already you're talking about someone who may be even older and they let their dream go a long time ago, and you're just saying, you can dream again, or if you're Louis, young and you've Louis, got a Louis, dream, do it. Louis was making fun in a loving way of my bald head. I'm <laughs> 65. Now think about this, and I'll say this slow. I'm 65, and I am with my partner starting a university. Uh, I Love like it. Colonel Sanders. He started Kentucky Fried Chicken with his first Social Security check, and he went one of the things we talk about is what if thinking he went to over a thousand businesses and said to a thousand businesses i'll give you my recipe i'll give you my recipe for free i just want a percentage of the additional revenue and a thousand people said no so when louis was talking about the challenges that he faced the no 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 you just keep coming back. And Louie and I teach you how to do that in such a way that when somebody says no to you, you don't internalize it. You don't take it personally. And I'm dysle- dyslexic. My my hearing is dyslexic. So that when you say no to me, <laughs> what I hear is on, as in right on. And I okay. go, yes, yes, yes. Like, yo. <laughs> so again, when somebody says, no, you can't do that, the one thing, and I got this from a guy by the name of Ken Pollock. Um, he said, when somebody gets in your face and says, no, you can't do that because you're a woman, because you're a minority, because you're too young, because you're too old, because you have no legs and no arms. And one of the guys that Louie and I talk about was, and this is not a joke, and this, he was born with no arms and no legs. I'll repeat that, no arms and no legs. And his parents said, they're very spiritual, They said, you are special. What that guy is, is a motivational speaker. He travels around the world. Google Nick Venujic. And I'm going to say, you know, I don't know how women think. I have no clue how women think. But this guy said, I am going to marry a gorgeous woman. And I'm going to have, in this marriage, a healthy, happy child. Now, no arms, no legs. Marry a gorgeous woman. If you Google Nick Venujic, you see the wife, you see the child. And again, what Louie and I teach is we take we talk about brain function. We talk about the reticular activating system. And again, I'm going to get back to what you said, Terry, when you said they gave you the farm. A lot of people say you can't do that because what Louie and I teach you how to do is to break that down in such a way that you turn the impossible into possibilities. I've done it. 
Louie's done it, but here's the cool thing. Forget Louie, forget Mark. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about your dreams, your vision, and how Louie and I, with a yellow tablet, number two pencil, and pig-headed determination, can help you attain your goals. That's what it's about, you winning. Let's talk about that in the next segment. I want to hear all about that. I want to hear more about Leg Up You. We'll get more details on that. You are listening to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker, with your host, Terry Martin. Our guests, Mark Chamberlain, Louie Castriata, and we will be right back. Madari Clinicals, a unique skincare company, has a complete skincare line for men and women. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals is for you. Their number one product? Forgiveness. It's the secret to younger looking and younger acting skin. You can experience the transformation with fewer wrinkles, firmer skin, and a more youthful radiant complexion. Treat aging, sun damage, rosacea, and more with forgiveness. Plus, buy one bottle of forgiveness, get one lip enhancing complex for free. Forgiveness. Apply it morning and night and keep forgiving and forgetting all through the day. Make a change with Madari Clinicals. Balance, restore, look, and feel new. Madari Clinicals, a complete skincare company for men and women. Call 866-646-3374 or check out MadariClinicals.com. M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Terry Martin is your host. She is here. I am Tom Jenkins with our energetic, wonderful, inspirational, motivational guests. They've got my blood pumping, Mark Chamberlain and Louis Castriata, uh, Leg Up Farms. Also, uh, we're talking now about Leg Up You, which the letter U, Leg Up You, and it's all about you as Mark has so uh, wonderfully uh, drilled into my head <laughs> that it's not about me anymore. It's about you. And uh, w- tell me more, guys, about Leg Up You and and the direction. And just w- tell me everything. <laughs> I want to know it all. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know. As I was listening to Louis uh, again, I was I was excited. I was wired. And uh, one of the things that Louis and I want to convey is, as Louis said before. Um, We want to focus on your dreams, your aspirations, your goals. We want us to be a tool that you can use to attain your goals. And when Louie was talking about uh, what he's accomplished with Leg Up Farm, um, you know, sometimes, uh, let's say a nonprofit wants us to come to uh, Alabama or Texas or whatever the heck, but, you know, may not have uh, a lot of money. One of the things, and I keep going back to it because it's what Louie and I teach, getting people to work for you for free because they want to, benchmarking the Amish. And, you know, I'll give an example. Uh, some years ago uh, when I was working, um, I wanted to do a workshop for the uh, American Heart Association. And, you know, I did the brainstorming and I did some what-if thinking, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could get my ideal donor for the American Heart Association. And what I was looking for was uh, a group of new, and I'll underline the word new, wealthy donors that were into collectibles. And by collectibles, I mean watches, rings, furniture, purdy shotguns, cars, that kind of thing. So I wanted new, wealthy donors, people that I didn't know, Uh, I wanted other people to identify them. I wanted other people to bring them to the Westmoreland Club. I wanted other people to pay for the Westmoreland Club. I wanted other people to uh, pay for the food, pay for everything. And I thought it would be neat in one of my brainstorming sessions. I thought, gee, wouldn't it be neat if I could get Christie's, someone from Christie's, to come in from New York City to work for me for free. Now, time doesn't permit getting drilling down into the whole thing right now. But with the what-if thinking, I was able to fill, for those of you in Northeastern PA that are familiar with the Westmoreland Club, we filled the dining room with new, wealthy donors identified by other people. They brought them there. The Westmoreland Club rental was paid for by other people. Christie's came in from New York City for free. And again, the focus, the whole thing, was about helping other people attain their goals. And again, what Louie and I talk about is, you know, if there's a nonprofit anywhere in the United States and you say, gee, we'd, we'd like to duplicate our ideal donors. I'm going to back up. Think about that if you're on the board of a nonprofit. Think of your ideal donor, whatever he or she looks like. What Louie and I can teach 
is how to duplicate that ideal donor with a yellow tablet, a number two pencil, and pig-headed determination. I've done it. Louie's done it. And here's the cool thing. We can teach you how to do it. So, you know, we have a standard fee when we go out and speak. But, you know, if a nonprofit organization says we have no money but we have the desire, what we can do in some phone conversations, some brainstorming is Louie and I can teach you, show you how you may be able to get other people to pay our expenses for you and in the brainstorming session. Mark, I'm on the edge of my seat right now because something sparked a thought. And I want everyone to think about having a shift when you walk into a meeting in the future. So usually when we walk into a meeting, we're thinking about us. We always walk into a meeting with the agenda. I want to get something for me. And I want you to have a shift in your thought process. When you walk into a meeting in the future, it's the idea of what's in it for the other person. Try to focus on the idea of what's in it for the other person in the meeting and not what's in it for you so that everybody in the room has a way that they can win. It's that idea of collaboration. So if everybody can win and you ha- and you change that thought process when you go into a meeting, everybody walks out with something great instead of us being focused only on ourselves. So I just wanted to share that. And then the other thing is we keep hearing this, you, 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 you. The other thing I think that's really important here. So has anybody had someone walk up into their face, point a finger, right? And we typically, when somebody does that to us, our reaction is probably our adrenaline starts pumping and we start to get enraged. We wonder what they're pointing at us for. But what I'm looking at is something that Mark said, too. You are more than you think you are. So now, when you see that visualization, I want you to envision you, 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 but not in a negative way. Somebody's pointing at you. You are more than you think you are. You can do it. You have to believe every day in where you want to go. You know, as I was listening to Louis, uh, one of the things, and I'm getting back to the brainstorming bingo, I subscribe to the uh, New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. I read them both, and it creates kind of a uh, intellectual uh, energy. And one of the things uh, that relates to what Louis was talking about, Wall Street Journal did a, a piece on Harvard research on brain function. And uh, one of the things that they talked about with regard to the brain is, and this gets back to Louis's point about focusing on the other person, you can literally cause positive chemical reactions in a person's brain with three words. You can make people feel good with three words. And it gets back to Louis, what Louis was talking about. And the three words are, tell me more. That rings in my head since you told me that. Tell me Amazing. more. It's not about Mark Chamberlain. It's not about Louie. It's about the man or woman across the table. And as Louis said, if they're yelling at you, you sit down, you like you do a breathing exercise, you listen, you understand, how can I help that person? And when that person is saying no, 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 I do a breathing exercise. I inhale in with God. I exhale out with Mark. And I, Louie and I talk about it. God gave us two ears and one mouth. He's not subtle. <laughs> We're supposed to listen more than we talk. And get back to Louie's point, tell me more. How can I, how can I help you? And, you know, one of the things, um, I get back to uh, one of my early mentors, Ken Pollock. He had a crud, crud delivery truck. And I won't go through the whole story. But um, he went to a huge major corporation and wanted to do something, and they said, no, 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 no. And what he did and what he taught me is when they're just saying no, he would say, tell me more or tell me why or I don't understand. And again, I won't get through the whole thing, but the one guy said, you don't even have, and he was really negative, And Ken said, do you mean if I had that particular thing, I could succeed? And the guy said, well, yeah, you would, but you can't, you don't. Ken just, it was like, holy cow. 
So again, when somebody's saying you can't do it because you're a man, you can't do it because you're a woman, you can't do it because you're a minority. Because he ended up getting the contract. Oh, he got it. It's right. huge. Right. And I filled the ballroom and Louie did a $10 million operation. And here's the cool thing. And here's what Louie and I focused on is you, the person. How can we help you attain your goals? And one of the cool things, we talk incessantly about benchmarking successful people. One of the people that we're benchmarking is Russell Conwell. He founded Temple University with a cute little story called Acres of Diamonds. If you haven't read Acres of Diamonds, Google it, buy it, read it, live it, love it. It's incredible. And what that is and what Louie and I talk about is we are surrounded by opportunity. Now, you know, we're in northeastern Pennsylvania, and a listener might say, well, I'm in Pittston or Nanny Coke or wilkes or Scranton or, you know, there's nothing here. There's a guy locally that we talk about in the seminars who created a $500 million business selling something he didn't own. I like to talk about risk-free naked options. And the sophisticated investor would say, there is no such thing as that. I mean, you can't do that. It's part of what Louie and I teach. Selling something you don't own. Selling a concept. And this guy was 18. He was a kid. And person after person said no to him, no to him, no to him. What he did was he put together a concept and sold the concept, and when he sold his business, he got $500 million. So again, if you're in Northeastern PA and somebody says, well, you can't do it here, what Louie and I are talking about is, whether it's Alabama or Texas or Paris, France, or wherever the heck it is, if you have a yellow tablet, a number two pencil, and a PhD, and again, the PhD stands for Pig at a Determination, you can do these things. What are we forgetting to talk about, guys? Well, you know, one of the things... Uh, that we teach is um, boards of directors. And I'll go back to the first guy that hired me, John McCall, uh, Mutual of New York. When I walked into his office, now think about this, I'm just a young kid, don't know anything. And I walk in, I'm hired by John McCall, an incredible individual. And his office, he's got these pictures all around the wall of historical figures, people that are deceased. And I looked at them and I said, John, what is that? Now, he just hired me, I'm excited. And he said, it's my board of directors. <laughs> he said, they speak to me. Now, get, now I'd just been hired and this guy's talking to me about dead people speaking to him. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, well, I, yeah, I didn't laugh at him. Right. <laughs> but you know, you think, okay, John, like, yeah, they speak to you. They're like, and I said, John, what do you mean? And he said, they teach me. I learn from their examples. So what Louie and I talk about is the importance of you, whoever you are, creating a cosmic board of directors. And what that would be would be historical figures, men and women in history that can speak to you. You know, one of the, the people that uh, we talk about is Helen Keller. Helen Keller gets me excited. Blind, deaf, dumb, a young woman. And you think about that. Blind, deaf, dumb, a young woman. And long, decades after she's gone, a guy in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Mark Chamberlain's talking about her because somebody reached out to this person and said, you are more than you think you are. You can be more than you think you can be. So again, that's what Louie and I are talking about. We don't care who you are, what you are, what you're thinking about. If you benchmark Louie, if you benchmark Mark, if you benchmark some of these people, these historical figures like the John McCall talked about, you can attain these goals. So Louie and I talk about a cosmic board of directors, and then we also talk about a real board of directors. Louie has one. I have one. I mean, your accountant, your lawyer, whomever that you can reach out to and sit down with in your quarterly meetings or however often you meet. So, you know, the idea of a board of directors, both a cosmic and a real board of directors, is important. We got about a minute left, Lou. You wanted to uh, add one more thing at the yeah, end. Yeah, I just want to share, you know, we want to light you up and help you to be what you want to be and go where you want to go. What's your destination? And my uh, quick steps are have the courage to dream, visualize your end goal as reality, focus on the next step, though. Don't get caught up. Focus on the next step. Do the right things every day. Be disciplined and follow that path. 
And the most important thing is work at the dream and never stop believing. Um, you can reach Mark and I at legupu.com. We'd love to come out and get you fired up. So legupu.com. Guys, I want to thank you both for coming in. This was an, an amazing show, very motivational, very inspirational. Uh, on my end, I'll speak personally for me. Uh, thank you very much. This is Make a Change with your host, Terry Martin. I am Tom Jenkins with our guests today, Mark Chamberlain, Louis Castriata, legupu.com. And if you have any questions for Terry, you can give her a call at 866-646-3374 or check out MadeiraClinicals.com. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend.